Hey guys, it's the Chad, your C10 truck nerd. Well, it's really late. Well, actually it's, it's really early, the morning of setup for the Sunflower Swap Meet. And that's a really big swap meet in the Wichita area. And didn't really know I was going until a few days ago when my buddy Jeremy hollered at me and said, hey, got some extra booth space available. Do you want any? I said, well, I don't really have enough stuff to fill up a booth. Then I started looking around and yeah, I, I could probably fill up four booths. It's yeah, it's, it's getting out of control here. So I guess I'll not sleep tonight and start pricing and see how it goes. Great. So I'm not a big fan of going through and getting rid of all my used truck parts, but I'm pretty limited on space right now. I desperately need a shop and it looks like that's gonna happen quarter to never. But if it ever does, then I can go through and start parting trucks out again and building up my stockpile. So we'll painfully go through and start pricing all this junk and get it down to the swap meet. Sad. Yeah, don't judge me. I know this is a little overwhelming, but you got to start somewhere, right? Now, one thing I'd recommend if you're going through and selling a bunch of auto parts or truck parts like that is grab you some reference. You know, whatever... Uh, Whatever prices are currently going for and you're selling used, you know, you usually got to slash the prices in half, maybe sometimes a quarter. But if you got some really nice parts, like, you know, some old school NOS stuff, then you can uh, kind of shoot for the stars. But there's just a ton of stuff in here. I can't fill up one booth space. Oh my gosh. So who's got a... Who's got any faith that I can get all of this junk in the bed of a five and a half foot Ford? We're gonna have to get a little bit creative. So it's uh, a little after two, so I think we can start uh, pricing this stuff. Great. Where's my tape? Where's tape? Tape and a marker, tape and a marker. Got it. So I use, uh, use me a little old faithful uh, permanent marker and masking tape. Call it good. Out. So when it comes to pricing all these used parts, I generally just go through and grab me an LMC, a Brothers, Classic Parts of America, see what all the stuff's going for brand new, cut it in half most of the time depending on the quality as, you know, like this brake pedal assembly. I went through and blasted it, prepped it and painted it. So it's pretty much turnkey. So I'm obviously gonna ask uh, more money than the one that's just been pulled straight out of a truck. Now there are some parts that are highly desirable that they don't make, so you can ask more money for that, especially like these good fenders. You know, this metal is so much better than the repops, they fit better. So it's, it's not uncommon for me to maybe even ask half price uh, on the original stuff there. So we'll keep marking and yeah. So it's a little after what, uh, wow, three in the morning. And we've got a pretty good chunk of stuff done. Kind of getting a little bit of organization, but uh, tell you what's really gonna suck is all this trim. I've, I've got stickers on almost all of it now, but I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna price it at. I gotta do a little bit more research. And you guys tell me my hair's looking so good. So, you know, maybe another hour or two. Be ready to load. Yay, swap me. So I'm going through and trying to organize all of these parts and different things I'm going to have for sale. That way I can start taking some overall pictures for the old face space 
And uh, that way people kind of have an idea. I'm kind of advertising for myself and then I'm gonna attract everybody to go down to the swap meet. That way hopefully I can sell all this junk in a couple days. So we're getting closer. Uh, it's uh, four. Awesome. So I've done it. It's uh, 6, 12 in the morning. I got 64 million pieces of trim marked, which took forever because Sometimes it's hard to remember which piece goes where, so I was out in the dark trying to match it up to forest, and it just, that part sucked. So, anywho, we've got all of it here. Next step is to go through and uh, show you what we got, and we'll load it up in the truck. So here's all that uh, million pieces of trim. But I got me a 7172 grill, cross members, lots of side marker lamps, got those NOS uh, tail light bezels. Bunch of decent fenders, mirrors, ton of square body uh, rally center caps. Got some new stuff and just a kind of a mosh posh of everything. Even new floor mats that I don't know where I got. And then we got some miscellaneous, uh, just kind of swap meat junk and a whole bunch of pocket knives. So let's, uh, let's load this up and, you know, eat breakfast. So I got the majority of it all loaded up, and I tell you guys, I was pretty good at Tetris as a kid, so I don't think she's going anywhere. Got the back seat and the kid's car seat's full too. That should be fine. As long as I don't roll the truck over, we should be fine and dandy. So we get this uh, down to Century too. Quick little rundown of everybody setting up, so pretty big show. I bet you I spend some money. Well, I got most all of it set up. Pretty organized, not bad for staying up all night. We've got a few tubs. Uh, the small expensive stuff I think I'll wait till tomorrow to put out so we'll cover it up see you tomorrow well I'm heading down to day number one of the swap meet and kind of excited I hope I make tens of dollars or even ten dollars would be would be good we'll see what happens We're all set up for day number one. You know, I mean, that's just something you say. It's a lot of credit. The next week, it happens. You know, I mean. Act like you're having fun. Well, we made it through day one. Not too bad. Hopefully this Saturday uh, brings more people and a little bit more money. I need to make more tens of dollars. We'll see.
So we're starting day number two. Kiddo helped me make this cool sign. But we got quite a bit of junk left to go. So why are you up so early? Because. You help dad today? Okay. Hopefully you're my uh, lucky charm because it didn't go so hot yesterday. So we'll see what we can sell. So what do you think? Should we go take a lap and see what's out here today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Hey, Biz. Yeah. I think we need some sunglasses on this one, huh? Yes. Yeah. That's bright. Look at that Shelby snake. Cool. Yeah. Think we can win that? Probably not. What would you do with it? Let you drive it? So this is uh, the only carnage left. So we did pretty good. Now we're just gonna carry the rest back to the truck. So that's gonna do it for our first swap meet. Well, at least our first swap meet where we were the sellers and not just buyers. Now would I say that's a great success? No, not really. I mean, one thing I'd tell you guys, if you are gonna do a swap meet, make sure you do your homework because the booth space there was kind of pricey, so you had to sell quite a bit of stuff just to get back into making a profit. Now, I am kind of happy because I got rid of a lot of junk that I didn't have to bring back home, but I was hoping to do a whole lot better than we did. So do a little research, ask around, see which ones are kind of a dud and which ones are a big success, and try to hit the successful ones. Well, if you guys haven't, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the other 67 to 72 videos. What'd you think? Yep, we, we bought an ostrich, so it wasn't all profit. Well, we appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.